Thank you, guys. Okay, people, please take a seat. Okay. okay. Yep, thank, thank you. <laughs> How is everybody doing day two AWE? Yes! Nobody's like so dreadfully hungover, you can't just go, ah. You gotta kind of, like do it like up skilly goes. So, welcome. We can all sit. Okay, yeah. everyone sit at once. So, thank you, everybody. Uh, and thank you so much uh, for supporting, you know, AWE and all the new technologies that we're finding, and especially some of the startup scenes and everything. So, uh, my, uh, my name is Mookie, and we're here today to talk about a very, very, very important topic um, around, you know, thinking about inclusion and thinking about diversity and thinking about. Thinking about things that can, you know, really be enhancing your teams and your projects and your businesses, and that does include, you know, uh, uh, you know, looking around you and making sure that there's a good balance of, you know, the females and the males and what's happening with that too. Um, but you know, from a corporate level to a startup level, and uh, where we are making change. So this session is to really, you know, get you thinking, get you inspired. Hopefully, there are microphones on either side, so we want you to be thinking of some questions. We're going to save till the very, very end. But it's about making that change instead of just talking about it and talking about doing it and throwing some uh, examples. And one of them is um, XR Moms. So with me today, the wonderful Alexandra Weiss. We could keep this. <laughs> Thank you, Weiss. <laughs> oh, wait, we, we promised some whooping. So can I get a whoop whoop? <laughs> okay, that's all right. We'll work on that one. We'll work on that one. Alex, welcome to AWE. You. Can you tell us a bit about what you do at Vodafone and uh, what you've been up to? Hi, I'm Yuki. Thanks. Um, I feel very welcome here as a female developer, actually. I'm super psyched to be here. Um, I've joined Vodafone quite recently, actually. Um, it was just last year in December. And um, my, my daily life is really just a developer, so it's uh, super, super exciting from a lot of standpoints. Um, and yeah, um, I'm, uh, all of the demos here just get me really, you know, tingly. <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> exactly. So this is your first AWE as well. So yes. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So we're going to get stuck in to the XR Moms initiative. But we, you know, when we were, we've been having such great conversations with everyone over the last, you know, you know, couple of days, and especially, you know, all year. And we've seen some of these changes being made. But we know that there's still a long way to go, especially around, you know, inclusion of. Um, those balanced teams around new parents. This includes fathers. Uh, you know, where, where, do, where do those boundaries lie with, you know, with, with parental leave or finding upskilling and new skills and things like that too. And we're going to take a deeper dive into that, um, but kind of you know, like focusing on, on the parents of, of mothers. And so just a caveat, neither of us have children. I have a dog and a husband. That kind of counts, right? <laughs> yeah, it does count. Yeah, dogs have So we're giving, uh, you know, hopefully some positive, positive uh, influence on uh, being good allies and thinking about how you can be a good ally to your peers in the industry, whether they're in the work or not in the work too. And so we even just talking to Richard and our, and our badass girls about, you know, where these stats lie. We know that there's still like a really big shift in uh, the female to male ratio in businesses, in the STEM industry, in engineering, in developers, in even UX and UI design. And that's starting from like we talk about the top down. What can what can everyone do from a C-suite level, and where can protocol be made, and where can some of these, uh, you know, you know, new new programs be developed? But we're also looking at it from um, the bottom up and how we can bring the next generation and this generation. I never say next gen. That means you're not born yet, right? But where these come into play. But even thinking about startups and and some of the like the Web three businesses we we're talking about, like the, the ball, BCG, the Boston Consulting Group. Uh, had the stat out recently, a couple days ago, around um, the business in Web3, only 7% were exclusively female-run businesses, and uh, only one-fourth of those, uh, of the funding, a fourth of the funding went to female founders. And that's not enough, is it? Um, so it's about kind of making those changes from within um, the industry. So what, what kind of challenges have you seen? Like, where do you, where do you see the state of the industry especially from a developer perspective. Yeah, uh, it's actually quite similar to what you've already said, Miyuki. So um, in, in the UK, for example, we have a, um, roughly 15% of women in the tech workforce and just 5% in the immersive uh, technology. So that's uh, uh, quite a low uh, percentage. Um, and in, in the EU in general, the, it's around 25, uh, 22%. I'm sorry, um, of women in tech. So that's it, really a point where we need to improve in order to get better diversity in the, in the Yeah. Do, do you think it's coming from skill sets or learning yeah. new skills yes. or improving those skills? 
So um, I think that um, the, the industry is very diverse and you need very diverse skills to get in. And um, in my opinion, there's a big misconception, especially in women and girls, that you need to have studied computer science or math or anything to get into this industry. There's so many roles that you can fill. If, if you want to be a developer, go for it. Yay! <laughs> um, yay, developers. But also there's so many other important roles and we need people to fill these roles, and especially women to fill these roles. Right. And, um, you know, coming from also like a STEM background like yourself, you know, where, where, where are you seeing things working well as far as like, you know, upskilling in the STEM industries? Yeah. So um, I, I was actually surprised to read that um, within the STEM industry and the tech industry, there's already a lot of career changer uh, women working already. For women with a non-STEM background are working in the STEM or tech industry. Mm -hmm. um, so that's actually working quite well already, but um, we need more of that, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, we've, we've seen some of these initiatives being done. And again, you know, hats off to AWE as well for you know, finding the balances and so many female speakers. And, and uh, diverse backgrounds, not only just female, you know, but it's like a great diverse background. And I'm, um, you know, thinking about what can be done in improving the situation, like where else are you seeing change? Um, and even from, you know, like where Vodafone's a big corporation, yeah. you know, there are other initiatives happening inside the, the company, bigger companies. Yes, of course. So there's always initiatives addressing uh, kids and especially girls who get more excited in tech in general, of course, which is great. Um, and I think that that's like a foundation level. We have to get um, teens excited about um, what kind of careers there could be for them and what are their passions. And um, the next step for me would be to find young women and their education in the, at maybe a university level or something because um, XR study material is just showing up. So when I studied, there was no, no way to study XR as a material. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there was computer science, but not XR uh, specific stuff. And then the top layer for me would be getting um, women who have already some experience in the workforce to, to maybe if they want to change their career into XR because they see that it's, it's here to stay, in my opinion. XR is here to stay and we need people to work in it. There we go. That's a whoop whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, by the way, if you hear the whoop whoop, we are having like a whoopometer. So whoever <laughs> does like the most whoops, I, I buy him a drink afterwards. So Luke is winning there for like. Um, and so speaking of, you know, the upskilling at the younger age, we do want to give a massive shout out to the Badass Girls yes. right here in the front row. Whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> I, and I cannot tell you, like, you know, I've, I've been in the, the industry for a while and you're like not just so impressed with the initiative and, and your skills and the poise and professionalism you had at age 13 to 14, 15. So one more, one more round of applause for the XR girls. Very because much this so. is where I, I want to hire you one day and hopefully other people in this room and bring you back up on stage and, and nurture from that. Side. So let's get stuck into XR moms. Let's yes. let you, here's a little pointer for you here. Yes. Thanks. So we're, we're talking about some of the ways to make these changes and thinking about your own companies, whether that's a large company or a startup or other communities that you could be joining, because ultimately we're all peers to, to help each other and find the allies and start to make that change rather than just talk about it. So you thought about that quite a lot with some yeah. other uh, females in the industry and started yeah. one of the co-founders of XR Moms. So tell us yeah. a bit more about XR Moms. Yes, so um, it's a non-profit uh, organization or initiative at the current state. Uh, it's a very young initiative still. Um, we want to, to improve the XR literacy of especially women and mothers. Um, and we want to get them excited about XR. We want to, to really, uh, to, to them, we want them to see that this is really the technology of the future. And um, we also want them to, to find uh, to feel empowered to actually make their career in XR because it's very important for us that there is more women in XR and we think that mothers are a key, a key figures in this. Um, and also, um, we, we think that it is very important that mothers have very special needs. So um, a mother can't spend um, three weeks in a row with a 10, 10 hours per, per um, week program, which is very strict. She needs a very flexible schedule, and we aim to, to provide that kind of flexible schedule for them. Yeah, so that's, that's really the, the base point. Yeah, and this is great because you know, we were talking about... Um, are there any mothers in the room, by the way? Yeah, by the way. Word to your mother. Word to your mother. See what I did there. <laughs> it's... It is important. It's a lot of a lot of a lot of times. You know, you, you might not think about things or and or have an unconscious bias. You know, so we're talking about um, a conference I was at 
recently. That's a very, very big one. And we thought someone just was going for her lunch break. And she actually had to go back to her hotel to breastfeed her newborn baby. And she brought it with her husband. And this is where like, maybe more organizations can you know, have a little bit of the daycare on the side. So are you finding yeah. these are some of the programs you're looking into? It's definitely. Kind of help so they can come to the conferences and come to some of the training sessions. It, it's definitely a big point of it, yes. Yeah. So we, we need um, some support uh, structures around, of course, as well. Uh, it's not just about the education. It's also about some kind of uh, support structure around the women and, um, and their needs. Right. So that's the timings of childcare, of yeah. raising your kids or school runs mm -hmm. and things like that, you know, and yeah. also to support uh, if, it, if it is a one person household or two one person household. Cool. OK, what else? So, what, so who makes up the group? Um, so we are quite a diverse team in, um, in a lot of senses because it's not just moms. There is um, two moms in our team. <laughs> um, the rest of us, is, um, we, we'd like to call ourselves the allies. Um, and um, most of us work in the XR industry. There is one educator who just um, who, who thinks that XR is really something that that's very important for for the future of um, the, yeah of kids and teens in education. And she joined us just recently. It's really great to get her perspective on things. And uh, this is a quick shout out to Gabs, who's on the other stage. So we have a sort of an Austrian connection uh, with uh, Gabriella also. Uh, yes, yeah, so Gabriella over at our Women Immersive Tech stand um, here, very, very close by. And I guess you, you might be recruiting for some more members. Like who, who, else would, who else would make a good fit in your team? Um, yes, of course. So we, we always dads, happy to, dads, dads, perhaps. Yeah, of course. Yes. Well, we, we are happy to, to receive everybody who, who really sees this, um, who really wants to improve the situation of women and mothers in particular in this industry. So yes, dads, educators, moms, role models. Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Okay, and I think you got a couple more slides here to yeah. talk us through. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really short. Go for one. it. Yeah. So um, who's this program for, um, and why mothers in, in uh, specific? Right. So. Um, we think that um, new mothers, so mothers who have very small kids and babies, really need um, a very special um, yeah, environment to, to try to get into the XR industry, and we want to provide that. Um, but it could also be um, working moms who, who have kids that are maybe almost grown up um, and are just looking for a career change, who really just want to, yeah, to, to, to find a new way, um, maybe to get out of part-time working also, you know, to, to upskill. Um, then... As you already mentioned, mothers who are looking for a support network who, who are feeling isolated in quite a lot of ways because what we've heard is that quite a lot of women start to feel isolated once they, they are mothers because they don't have their social connections anymore. Um, and one final step for us is that um, we want um, mothers to see their parenting leave as an opportunity really to, to, uh, to find the way for themselves to grow with their family. That's very important for us. Yeah, tell it. Okay, oh, go for it. Yeah, oh, yeah sorry. Uh, just, just, and and um, yeah, and we we want mothers to be role models for their kids as well. Because if your your parents are you know in in some kind of tech or are very passionate about something, you kind of perceive that as as a kid. You 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 grow up with it, and it becomes very normal to uh, to you. And we really like to to foster kids to uh, yeah to be excited about XR and to see it's, it's something cool. <laughs> right. So ha say, seeing a mother working in technology is an everyday thing rather than, yeah. oh, you're one out of 50 people at that workplace or one out of 10 people at that workplace or you're only 7% of that funding yeah. that'll be hopefully um, as, as, uh, as these uh, companies mature and grow. So what are the other, like we were kind of talking a little bit more about the parenting leave as an opportunity. So when you are on like, uh, and we know, you know, Austria has great uh, paternity leave and maternity leave and some countries only have a couple weeks. Back in the States, I think it's like six weeks or something. Yeah. So what, what, where do you see the opportunities kind of, you know, coming, coming into play for a, a new mother? Yeah, so um, the, 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 during paternity leave, you, you need some, some, yeah, some sort of um, warm environment to, to, you know, to get you started and mm -hmm. to, to, to help you find a new way. So we want to support this um, through sponsorship with um, the industry and partnerships with the industry. Um, so that um, you can already get some contacts and, um, and meet people. Networking is just very important in this industry, I'd say. Um, another way that we, we think that, um, as I already said, that, uh, the, that, that we need to help and that um, mothers need help in particular is um, having a flexible curriculum and a very flexible program. Uh, for them to, to be able to breastfeed during the day, maybe, you know, it's, it's just very important. And um, 
as we already said, support is very, very important, and having support structures around um, women who have, who have kids and maybe small kids or larger kids, um, the age doesn't really count. Small kids and large kids. kids sorry, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> older kids. That's sorry, you're <laughs> good. Yeah. And how have you seen um, how have you seen the improvement in some of the moms that have joined so far? Um, so we we haven't done a real pilot yet, so um, we're still in the um, preparing phase of that. Um, Got gotcha. But yeah, so excellent, excellent. Okay, and then what what is uh, what's the next? What are the next steps then? as you grow this initiative? Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're really looking forward to our first pilot. We are um, partnering or we are looking for partners and educational institutions um, and further educational institutions who want to help us um, because we can't really do all of this alone. Uh, we need your help. <laughs> um, we, we need members uh, who, who really support us, who have different views on things, who have different skill sets actually also. Um, we are looking for partners in educational institutions and um, also in the industry as well, you know, who wants, who's looking for, for people who are career changers, who is looking for what kind of skill, for whichever, whichever kind of skill sets uh, at the moment. Um, this is very important, I think. And um, lastly, um, or oh no, this is last but not least, um, we need um, role models, mentors, and also trainers who want to really um, who are really passionate about this topic, who really want to help us upskill up the moms. And this is last but not least, we need allies in the forms of dads, because dads are very important for this. We can't do this without them. It takes a village. <laughs> Can we hear from the dads in the room? Yeah, whoop whoop to the dads. Whoop, One whoop, dad. Whoop, whoop. I know there's more than one in here. There <laughs> yeah. we go. How can the ladies go and whoop whoop be louder than the dads go and whoop whoop? I don't know. Maybe it's saying something, people. But <laughs> uh, So are you, is, are, are the kind of like partners you're looking for, are they ranging from larger corporate companies to perhaps some other new yeah. initiatives? Because I know yeah. you're building strong allies um, in Germany and in Austria and the DAC region, yeah. um, especially around like XR Vienna and women in immersive tech are here yeah. to kind of like support each other. What are you, what are you looking for specifically? Um, yes, uh, any kind of network helps, of course, but um, yeah. yeah, so, so really, um, Having a, a, like the women in, um, in immersive tech, for example, is a very would be a very good partnership for us because they really represent what we want to do. We want more diversity. We want more mm -hmm. women, and that's really um, that would be a really great partnership, actually. Yeah. Excellent. So I think that's a little bit tying into how we, as an immersive tech XR industry, can support each other and find peers within, you know, leaning into each other, or when maybe if you even see, you know, calling out kind of unconscious bias. I was talking to some other colleagues last night and they gave a great example of, um, they had 150 applicants for a very senior role and uh, the woman that they, they wanted to hire the woman and then they went to hire and then she revealed she was pregnant and they, hired, they gave her the job anyway because that was about her skill set uh, and then she had her baby and she's still working there. So it's a little bit about changing, our, changing the way we think, changing the way we approach a situation and then even just like asking, you know, asking for, um, you know, where, where can I help you? Where can I support you too? So we do have two microphones on the side of the stage. If anybody has a question or you don't even have to, have to ask a question like you want to get up and say anything, do you want to jump on the mic there, Richard? Can you hear me? Yeah, just get on the mic. That's what it's yeah. for. It's an open forum. <laughs> And by the way, can I give you another shout out? Big up, who's looking after oh. the ex badass girls here. Yeah. Badass girls. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. We love what you're doing. Thank you for the presentation. I'm wondering about Vodafone. Have you been able to approach um, your team on the inside and get some information about how would Vodafone um, kind of think about working with moms in a different way? Yeah, so um, there is a woman network in Vodafone. Um, I haven't reached out yet because I've, I've just started recently <laughs> um, still, and so I'm still getting to know the structures. Um, but yes, this is definitely um, a, a group of allies that we, um, that we would, should and would want to address um, because uh, they, next to this um, women group, Vodafone also has um, initiatives to, to get um, kids excited about tech in general. So this would actually be, uh, the, I, th I think that these could be very strong allies, yes. Perhaps a partnership with Badass Girls and so on. Yeah. Excellent. So, hello. Hi. Oh, 
Uh, sorry. Go for I'll it. If, if, you, if you're comfortable name. saying your name and where you're from, that's cool. If not, no, no biggie. Sure. I'm Rachel. Um, I live in London and I work for Aviva. Um, I have a question for you. Something I faced in recent years in a job application process was that I felt that they were specifically hiring for a woman. And I was wondering how you feel about that. Because I had very mixed feelings mm. about being hired, hired specifically for being a woman because they wanted gender equality in their team. Um, whilst I appreciate the job offer, I don't, I had mixed feelings and I was wondering mm. whether, what do you think about that? Ooh, um, that's a tough one actually, I'd say, um, because even if people don't openly mention it, a lot of people think it, um, quite honestly. And um, I, I know that it can, it can be very hard on you because you start to um, question yourself. By the way, don't, don't question yourself and your talent, do not ever. Um, but it, it, it can feel that way, but on the same time, at the same time, maybe try to see it more as an they really want that change to happen and they try to, to do right. Sometimes they don't always find the best way to do it, um, but they, they try to. Um, so, so I'd say if, if you like the job, take it. It's also, so I'm going to just chip in on that one, and also someone who's on stage a lot, and the one of the reasons why Women in Immersive Tech was formed, because we were looking around, so why are we the only female speaker? Why are we the only female board member? Why are the, we the only female? Um, there is a certain aspect of people wanting to hit a quota, but you do want to be hired to be appreciated and be hired for your skills, and that's super important too. Um, and I'm going to just can't stress enough to go with your gut. Listen to your instinct. Maybe chat to some other people there that work at the company and see what the company culture is like, what that vibe is like. If it does feel like you can be part of that change, that's an important thing to be thinking about too. And if it does feel like, you know, you're going to smell a rat a mile away, aren't you? You're going to kind of, your spidey sense might go off like, hmm, I'm not so sure about this. And then in which case, continue to look for other work, but maybe keep your eyes on that company. See if they are kind of at a tipping point on their ratio of, of male to female or ethnic minorities and, and where they are in the industry too. So thank you so much for that question. I love yeah, your outfit, by the way, too. Super cute. <laughs> Oh, great. And how, how is it going? How's the job going? Okay. Yeah. Right. Got you. So, congratulations. You could have been the start of that change in the company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They probably could have worded it a bit differently. Yeah. May I ask where the company's from? In the UK. In the UK, got you, okay. So they could have, it just could have been a language issue because to, to get up and say, oh, we're looking for a woman, we're no, like, no, right, got you. Yeah, cool. Well, let's keep in touch because it'd be good to kind of hear and use good examples of companies that are saying, listen, we are specifically looking for a female in this role and here's what happened too, so. Cool, one more question. We got time for one more. Um, Hello. Hi, my name is Katerina, and I'm a PhD student. And one thing I would just want to point out, it's not a question, is when we are talking about diversity, I would love to not just think in the two categories, male and female, yeah. but open it up because there are so much more genders out there. Uh, absolutely. I do know we need to start somewhere. And it's really important. And the field where I'm working is also, I'm coming from informatics, software engineering. Mm -hmm. So, and we have the same issue. But if we kind of lock ourselves to diversity as a male, female thing, we still miss out about a lot of potential. Yeah, you're a million percent correct. And you know, the, the topic of this talk does cover, you know, ethnic minorities, you know, we, it, it isn't all welcome here discussion, so thank you for, for bringing that up. And it is, you know, we don't care your sexual preference, your background, or your color, or where you're coming from. Um, it is important to be thinking about that, especially when you're building your teams, especially if you're a startup, but also corporate companies. And so on this occasion, we wanted to deep dive into the mother issue, but um, you will find a lot more talks and papers and research, and um, especially on stage, covering the topics that do, you know, um, even even IBC, it's a big broadcasting convention, had their first ever LGBTQ panel. It's been going, the largest media production technology show, been going 58 years. It was their first LGBTQ panel. And 
initiatives like XR Moms and Women in Immersive Tech and, and um, Badass Girls and beyond that, you know, there's, are, are opening up the doors to kind of keep those discussions going. So um, we have run out of time, but you can find, we have run out of time, and obviously scan the QR codes. Uh, we're going to be over at the Women Immersive Tech table over here, so you can continue yeah. to chat to Alex. Yeah, and I just want to caveat, this is Alex's first time on stage, so. Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm super nervous. <laughs> uh, my name is Mookie. Thank you very much. We'll see you yeah, next time. Thank you. Thank you.